Hey Bo, how do colours impact our mood? I love this question uh, primarily because colour is a topic I've been studying for about maybe 20 years and colour makes explicit something that's fundamental about your perception which is that while the world exists we didn't actually evolve to see it it begins with the world but our perception of the world is different from that world if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it does it make a sound the answer is no it creates energy the sound is a function of your brain and what's true about sound is also true for color color begins with the stimulus that falls onto your eye you have three receptors you actually have four but you have three receptors that are using during daylight uh, during chromatic vision is through these three receptors called L, M, and uh, S receptors that your brain is able to turn that continuous intensity of light from four to 700 nanometers into this remarkable three-dimensional perceptual world of color. And color for us psychophysicists, neuroscientists who study color, uh, is reduced to basically four color categories, red, green, blue, and yellow. And each of those categories is defined by what we call a unique hue. There is a red in your perception that has no admixture of any other color. There's similarly, there's one of yellow, one of green, and one of blue. So we think that there are these four color categories, and there are reasons for having these color categories, which maybe I'll talk about in, a, in another episode if someone asks the question, it has to do with navigation and cartography. Uh, so we have these four color categories. Uh, and what's powerful about this is that um, these, this color comes from light that has actually has an admixture of all kinds of wavelengths. So when Newton first discovered that white light is actually a composite of all wavelengths, in other words, all colors exist within white, this was a tremendous challenge to the church at the time because the church believed, as many people do believe, that white is the essence of purity. Um, achromatic, in other words, the lacking of color is the essence of purity, when in fact it couldn't be dirtier. There's all the colors, the full rainbow exists within white and within gray, within black. Okay, so um, there's a wonderful contradiction there. The thing that we see as being the purest is actually the dirtiest. Uh, and what's more, we use colors in our, in our world, even though color only adds 10% of the information to a visual stimulus. Most of the information is carried by intensity, uh, but color adds only 10%, and yet it adds such richness to our experience. And we have such color memory. We remember the colors of objects. So I want to just go through these four color categories and suggest and explain some of the things that um, the colors do to you uh, and to your moods, for instance, your way of seeing. And there's a deeper point to this. But first of all, let's think about blue. Uh, studies have shown that blue has the biggest positive effect on your sort of your, your physical and your mental and your, your behavioral patterns in a positive way. Um, it can be very soothing. It can increase cre creativity. And it's often uh, perceived to be a conveyor of uh, happiness and, and rather of friendliness, which is one of the reasons why brands often, for instance, Facebook uses blue on its website and its, its colors because they're trying to convey um, uh, friendliness, which <laughs> is debatable. Equally, uh, having a lot of color and a bright color of blue can also create that sense of coldness. You've probably all experienced that when you have this white light that feels very cold and has these short wavelength elements, high intensity and short wavelength, which give that sense of coldness. Yellow uh, is just the opposite. It creates that sense of uh, warmth, actually. And part of the reason we think is that's uh, unconsciously associated with the sun. So we have the sense of warmth and therefore happiness. Uh, and it's also the brightest of our colors, which means it stands out. And again, that standing out, that pop out, can also create that sense of happiness. Red is a very complex color. Uh, it's a fascinating color. Uh, when people wear red, for instance, they actually have this increased sense of self-attractiveness. They'll perceive themselves to be more attractive and, and therefore they'll engage differently in the world than if they're not, being, not wearing red. For instance, if you're in a red car, you're more likely to drive faster than if you're in a blue or a yellow or a green car. 
which is one of the reasons why insurance companies given two identical cars will actually charge you more insurance if your car is red than if it's say blue or silver. Uh, and let's see, what else could this red do? Um, it can enhance your performance on detail. Uh, and if you're in an experience with lots of red, you're actually more likely to recall negative words from that memory memories that are attached to a high intensity and high quantity of redness in the environment. Uh, women who wear red are perceived by men to be more desirable, and the opposite is also true. Men who wear red are also perceived by women to be more desirable. Uh, so we tend to, red tends to actually evoke negative emotions. Um, and, and one example of this is that if you are giving someone, a student, an exam, and you have them look at a red piece of paper, just a red piece of paper, just for a short period of time, they're more likely to do worse on that exam than if they had stared at another color. Uh, on the contrast, uh, some positive aspects of red, which is that if you're, um, uh, it facilitates a, a faster and stronger reflex and immediate response, and probably because it's tied to danger. So that's blue, that's yellow, that's red. What about green? Well, green is wonderful. Green is associated, not surprisingly, with nature. Um, in fact, our eyes and our brain are more sensitive to the middle part of the spectrum, around 550 nanometers, than to any other part of the spectrum, which induces the perception of green, because there's so, so much green out there, right? The atmosphere actually filters and, and makes that part of the, the spectrum far more intense. Um, and Green is actually soothing, it's relaxing. It's one of the reasons why uh, green rooms are green. The room that people go into before they go to a performance or go onto stage or do an interview. I've spent many time in a green room. And the reason is because it's thought to be able to facilitate relaxation while at the same time maintaining focus. Uh, you are likely to be less tired and have more energy and happier if you exercise in a green room probably because your brain is associating that with exercising outside, which we know has tremendous impact on your brain. Green can facilitate your creativity compared to say white or gray or red or blue. Uh, and in particular, when studied with word-based and picture-based activities, you're more likely to have a better memory. So green has a very positive emotions and, and it decreases your negative emotions. Um, and so as a result, if you have an experience where there's a lot of green, you're more likely to remember positive and positive words. So what's the sort of the deeper point about this? The deeper point is that the world is constantly impacting you. Not only do you affect the world, the world affects you. And it affects you even at this most basic fundamental level of the intensity of light, of color, right? Perception of color couldn't be any easier. It's one of our simplest perception. Even jellyfish see lightness and they don't even have a brain. And intensity, brightness is an aspect of color. Uh, and I'll give you an example of how other aspects and other ways in which your perceptions, your fundamental perceptions, even of another person, of yourself, are affected by these very low level sensorial um, uh, qualities. Uh, so, for instance, imagine that uh, I bring you into a room and I ask you to meet someone for the very first time. Maybe you're interviewing them for a job. After that person leaves, well, while they're there, I give you, a, let's say, a, a hot liquid into a cup, let's say, obviously, like a coffee or a tea. Once they leave, I then ask you to describe this person. What's remarkable is you're more likely to describe them in warm words. You're more likely to feel good about them. Uh, and why? Because you're holding a warm cup of coffee. In contrast to if I given you a glass of ice water, in which case you're actually more likely to describe them using cold words, right? You have no idea this is happening to you. Uh, similarly, if um, someone, for instance, if you spend time with someone who's very negative uh, on, on average, right? Uh, they're always finding, always complaining, always finding out what's wrong. Um, this will affect you. We call this corrosiveness. It will actually eat away at you. Um, and it eats away at your brain in almost like a literal sense. Uh, if they use angry or hateful words to you, they insult you, your brain will actually register that as a slap. 
like you're physically you're physically impacted by that. An example: if I use the word hate, and I prick your finger, you know, to hurt you, um, I'm going to activate the same parts of your brain. Why? Because hate, the meaning of hate is pain. It's a painful sound. It's a painful word because your brain is perceiving the meaning of the thing, not the thing. What's the deeper point here? The deeper point is to become perceptually intelligent. Perception matters. It underpins everything it is to be you. When you become aware that you are strongly affected by your environment in this way, the greenness, the nature, how you design your space, the colors you put, is it noisy with the color? Is it noisy with the sound? These are all going to deeply impact you. And it's only by becoming aware of that do you have the possibility of seeing yourself see differently. And color makes this explicit, which is one of the reasons why I find it so fascinating. You can never know the other color that the other person is seeing, right? Uh, it's called the inverted color spectrum. And yet these, this very abstract perception makes one of the most fundamental points about what it is to be human. So thanks so much for listening.